Sometimes people buy gear they don't need simply because they don't know what they need. I'm here to help you break through the confusion and help you make a choice that's right for you. When choosing an audio interface for a co-host or helping someone pick one out, what I like to do is ask probing questions because the answer to those questions will help steer me to the proper equipment. Most notably, what's your budget? The budget will determine whether we can cancel some of the devices right out of the gate. And this is a huge time saver because if somebody's not willing to spend a certain amount of money, then there's no need to suggest devices that are way above what they're looking for. Are you a solo podcaster? Are you a co-host? Do you have a co-host in room or remotely? This is going to help shape what you're actually going to need from the device itself. What's your use case? Are you simply going to record and edit later? Or is there a live element to your podcast? Do you need onboard recording for redundancy? Are you worried about losing a recording so you want to have that built right into the device? Or do you have other means to take care of that? Are sample rate and bit rate important to you? Do you need the ability to trigger sound effects on the fly? If so, that is going to narrow down your list of perspective units that you could use. Although there are software options to handle that. Do you need the ability to connect your cell phone to the device? And lastly, do you need your audio interface to be portable? And I mean truly portable, being able to operate off of batteries or a battery bank that it's connected to. I know it seems like a lot to think about, but these are some of the questions I like to ask because it will help quickly narrow down the list of potential audio interfaces that you would choose from. If you're a solo podcaster or a co-host and you're going to be recording into software or you're joining someone else via a voice over IP and they're going to be recording the podcast, then there are a plethora of devices that you could use. But I'm going to focus on the ones I have direct knowledge of. And at the very top of my list would be the M Audio Air 192 4. The Audient Evo 4, the Focusrite Solo, 3rd Gen, and the Behringer UMC 22. And what's cool about these devices is if you are a musician and you wanted to plug in an instrument, they each have an instrument port right on the device, which is really, really cool. For the most part, any podcaster could use these devices, record into software, or connect with a host remotely and have them record the entire podcast, and you'd be all set. But there's some of us who need added functionality. The cheapest way to get into being able to play sound effects like this would be the Zoom PodTrack P4, which has four buttons on the front that you can trigger sound effects. But four just isn't enough for me, so I have to cancel that. And the other reason I didn't stick with that device is because it records in 44.1, 16-bit. And for my workflow for videos, I need to record in 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. But if those aren't limitations for you, then the Podrack P4 is an excellent way to get into a combination of in-studio hosts and remote hosts via cell phone and USB. However, if your needs are even above that, then we can start to talk about the big format devices like the Rodecaster Original, the Rodecaster Pro 2, and the Mixcast 4. I've owned all of them at various points, currently am on the Rodecaster Pro 2, and I have the Mixcast 4 sitting next to me as well, which I think both of these devices are fantastic, and I'm going to give you my honest take on the comparison of the Mixcast 4 compared to the Rodecaster Pro Original and the Rodecaster Pro 2. I think the Mixcast 4 sits somewhere in between the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is far and away the best, most functional all-in-one device you can get for podcasting, in my opinion. But I do think it's better than the original Rodecaster Pro. It has more gain, better outputs. And for me, it's been a rock-solid device. I know there's people out there who have commented on my videos and who have reached out to me directly. But personally, I have not experienced those same issues. And I'm always surprised when people comment about having issues with the Mixcast 4 because I've just not experienced it. And I thoroughly enjoy the device. And I think the Mixcast 4, which currently sits at a ridiculously low price, 
would suffice 99.9% of all podcasters. That's just my personal opinion. You get onboard recording. You have sound banks on there. You can switch them now due to firmware updates. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth or TRRS, which is great. They do have onboard effects, so you can change your voice. And you can sculpt your sound a little bit, but not as much as you can on the Rodecaster Pro 2, obviously. And I think that the Rodecaster Pro 2, with the ability to add that second USB, even though I made a workaround for the Mixcast 4, you can check out that video on my channel. That sets it apart. And the routing options on the Rodecaster Pro 2, just absolutely phenomenal. So you can send different channels to different headphones, and you can make your own mix minus, as it were. The Rodecaster Pro 2 is the most well-thought-out device in existence for podcasters, in my opinion. And there is no question that it sits at the top of the food chain. But what I'm trying to convey in this video is you don't need it. If you're not trying to sculpt the sound on the device, and you're going to do that in post. If you don't need to connect to two different computers for streaming, if you don't need the buttons to trigger MIDI responses, and all this extra wonderful stuff they've added to it, if you don't need that, then you are spending a large chunk of money for stuff that you're never going to dig into. And it's not necessarily a great idea. I'm really hoping, I know Mackie has made a smaller format device like this. It is lacking a couple of things, in my opinion, but the price is $350 currently as I record this video. And I can get a Mixcast 4 as low as $399. And I've heard reports out there even lower than that but you'd have to check online for that. And as I said before, I believe the Mixcast 4 would suffice 99.9% .9 of all podcasters that are looking to create a podcast and have onboard recording and stuff like that. I really think it's a solid device. And the advantages of the Rodecaster Pro 2 are things that you could get around if you do post-production or if you don't really have a need to do very detailed routing and live streaming. But for those who need that functionality, the Rodecaster Pro 2, as I've stated numerous times, is the absolute apex currently of podcast devices, in my opinion. A lot of people often ask me where I sit on the audio interfaces that I've mentioned earlier in the video. I would probably pick the M-Audio Air 192.4. That'd probably be number one for me. The Audient Evo 4 would be number two. I think I would do the Focusrite Solo, third gen. That would be three. And then if I needed what I believe to be good quality and to maintain a really tight budget, I've used the Behringer UMC22. I don't think it gets enough credit for the build quality. So I have co-hosts. One is on an Evo 4. One is on a Focusrite Scarlet Solo, third gen. One is on a Behringer UMC22. And I think they all sound great. And out of those three, I would say my co-host John sounds the best just because of his environment. He has fixed it for podcasting and DJing. And he is on the Audient Evo 4. He sounds fantastic over the software solutions like StreamYard, Skype, and the like. And I'll be honest, it sounds like we're in the same room. It's fantastic. But I think you get really good quality from the other devices if you have the right environment that you're recording in. So I just wanted to bring this up because the questions that I posed here today, I hope that if you're looking for a device that you'll pose those honestly to yourself. So instead of going out and getting a Rodecaster Pro 2, if you're a co-host and you're not really needing all the functionality and features, that you can just settle on an audio interface that's really great quality at an affordable price. Ultimately, only you can make the decision on how much you want to spend and what the functionality needs to be. But I hope this video was helpful in the sense of helping you needle down to what's important for you and some possible units that could work well for you. But as always, there's tons more interfaces out there. I tried to just stick to ones I have personal knowledge with and have owned and honestly it's a great time to be a podcaster because 
There's an abundance of equipment. You're able to get excellent sound at an affordable price. So chime in in the comments down below. Where do you fall in on this conversation? What are your top interfaces for a solo podcaster if they were recording to software? And out of the big three, we'll call them, between the Roadcaster 1, 2, and Mixcast 4. Where do you settle in on this discussion? I hope that helps. Thank you so much for tuning in.